Hello everyone, welcome to CMU Visit Day of Machine Learning Department. So my name is Chen Chi Chen. I'm going to become an assistant professor of, in the machine learning department in the coming fall. Today I'm going to tell you a bit about my research, and the title of my talk is Element of Learning Systems. So we all know machine learning, and machine learning is having enjoyed a huge amount of success today. And one of the interesting question that I always like to ask myself is what are the basic elements that contribute to the success of machine learning? So if you look back into history, machine learning actually started as early as 1960s or even earlier. Around that time, uh, we can see models like support vector machine, ConfNet, LSTM, gradient boosting machines. Many of the concepts that we are familiar with today are already invented um, uh, around 2000. And around the same time in 2000, we started to see a boom of companies that started to collect and curate data from web. And those data serves a very uh, nice resources for uh, machine learning data sets. And we started to see competitions like Netflix Challenge, Kaggle, and ImageNet Challenge. It really opens new areas in sub areas of machine learning applications, like in the case of Netflix Challenge for the recommender system, ImageNet for the deep learning area of computer vision. Today, the data that come from uh, web and other places become more diverse. We start to see data come from your mobile devices, the watches you wear, the cars you drive, and so on. It brings a lot of interesting challenges. How do we uh, do learning and store those data around? Around 2006, the arrival of cloud computing really helped us to be able to push this uh, computing to a next stage to be able to leverage all the data that provides to us. And the arrival of GPU computing naturally helped us to start to bring more of the deep learning world. And today, GPU still powers the many of the computing workhouses of our model training framework. And another interesting trend now is that people are starting to build specialized accelerators that are specially tailored to certain models like BERT and other models. And uh, but also brings interesting challenges: how do we program those hours? Machine learning model research, data, and hardware are three pillars that drive the success of modern machine learning research. However, there's still one missing ingredient in here. So 10 years ago, I, when I was an undergraduate student, I worked on deep learning. And I have to spend more than three months writing customized CUDA kernels in order to run my uh, deep neural network model on the GTX 2080 GPU then. Today, I only have to write a few lines of Python code. Such big change really thanks to the arrival of machine learning systems. In particular, around 2000 time, we start to see a uh, different kind of interesting learning systems coming popping up, including GraphLab for general purpose graph computing, Apache Spark for general, general purpose data analytics, Scikit-learn for general purpose machine learning, Cafe, the first generation of deep learning system, XGBoost uh, for gradient boosting, and MaxNet, uh, TensorFlow, and PyTorch are the current generation of deep learning systems. My research is mainly focusing on building effective learning systems that works for everyone. And in particular, there are several elements that I, that I mainly care about. Um, these elements include making learning systems accessible and scalable, trying to build more intelligent into those systems so that they can be smarter themselves, and trying to enable full stack optimization so that we can not only develop useful models, but also help us to co-design hardware and systems to run those models very fast on different kind of environment. Uh, I will first briefly touch on the accessibility component of or one of the using one of my past research, XGBoost, as an example. So XGBoost is a scalable tree boosting system that can combine multiple weak decision trees into, into a strong one. We developed it around I think five years ago, since then, it has become one of the de facto tools for data science. It's used by more than half of the Kaggle winning solutions and used by major companies to drive their production pipeline. One of the interesting technical highlights of XGBoost is that not only we bring system level improvement, but also bringing interesting learning techniques to help us to make the uh, model more accessible. In particular, there's a mechanism that allows us to automatically handle missing values. The idea is that when we start to learn models that that learn models that that comes from those data set, a lot of the data are, can be missing. So, you know, traditional decision tree only learns to handle the values that are concrete. So, what do we do when the value when there's a missing value? 
The idea is that besides the normal decision tree directions, we, in, we will incorporate a default direction on each of our branches. And we will learn those default directions as part of a learning process so that the decision tree can learn to automatically handle those missing values based on the past statistics. So that's one example of how we can make learning system accessible. And uh, let me talk a bit up about how we can build scalable algorithms to make learning more scalable. In this particular case, actually, this is an algorithm that we implemented in the learning system at MaxNet, and now it's been picked up in many of the other learning systems. So in particular, the question is how we can train neural networks with uh, limited GPU memory. So in a traditional uh, backprop algorithm, what you will do is you will first run forward propagation, and then you run backward propagation. The problem is that you have to keep every intermediate value alive in your memory, and that brings the memory cost to be linear to the number of layers um, in, your, in your neural network. And imagine that you want to train very deep neural networks, and it's very easy to run out of GPU memory. So what we do instead is we can actually have an alternative technique that only checkpoints uh, some of a color node in the intermediate computation. While we are doing backward computation, we will recompute some of the missing uh, node that, that is not marked and run mini backpropagation in those segments. By running those mini segment recomputations, actually, we only have to spend um, a small amount of me uh, memory to store the intermediate result and another small amount of memory to recompute the intermediate computations. And if we choose the recomputation smartly, we could get to a recomputation cost that is square root of number of layers. And by doing that, we, we can train much deeper neural networks with much fewer GPU memories. And this is one of the aggression that's being deployed in many of the deep learning frameworks nowadays. So, so far we have talked about uh, machine learning systems that are trying to bake in new aggressions and system elements to help us to build better machine learning uh, models. The problem of these machine learning systems, though, is that there's a lot of effort that, can have, that have to go in to optimize those systems themselves. And uh, I, as a researcher, spend quite a lot of time doing that myself. So one of the questions that we ask now is, can we actually uh, automate this process and use machine learning itself to optimize those systems? Uh, the answers we can, that's one of the most recent research topics we are looking at, which is called learning-based learning systems. The idea is that not only want to be a system that enables machine learning, but also use machine learning to optimize those systems themselves. In particular, we are building uh, a, a specific system called TVM that is the end-to-end machine learning compiler that uses machine learning to automatically optimize deep learning model deployment. This is the end-to-end -end compilation that, that contains a high-level intermediate representation, a low-level, and hardware backends. And one of the important takeaways is that we will use uh, what we call AutoTVM to automatically generate different variants of program search space and use build a statistical cost model for those programs to, to be able to guide the search of the, of the optimum program that may run on the target platform. In this case, it could be Raspberry Pi, or GPU, or new accelerators. And there are a lot of interesting choices we have to make in terms of how do we do smart program modeling and trying to build uh, cost models that, are, that can be transferred across different problem domains. And there are still a lot of interesting research problems there. So besides the existing research that I talk about, there are also quite a few new research challenges we are, we are currently want to look into. First of all, um, so far when we, took it, when we take a look at uh, what the current learning system do, in particular what TVM does, um, it, is, uh, it is the automatic uh, system that allows you to search over a space of possible programs. And it will output an uh, optimized tensor program. However, we can even imagine a, even a broader search space that includes not only the, the program itself, but also includes the space of models, a space of tensor programs, a spa space of hardware variants. And what we want to do is to build a full stack system that gives you a combination of the optimized model, program, and hardware variant. And in order to do that, we will need to co-design the high-level ML models, the system optimization, and how we're designed together, and put machine learning as a first-class citizen. Going further, 
Uh, another interesting topic I, I would I would like to explore is to take a look at how uh, the life cycle of intelligent applications. So in particular, if you look at current intelligent applications, what we do is we have training data that takes into learning system, and you will learn a model and deploy it. However, in the long run, if you look at real world examples, learning system interacts with the environment that continuously gets new data, new models, and sometimes having new tasks emerging. And the question is, how can we design learning system algorithms under this context that help us to do lifelong evolutions of model, data, and system themselves? And so, as a high level takeaway, uh, I'm interested in doing system, uh, doing learning system research around several areas, including both the machine learning perspective and the system perspective. And I believe that element of future learning systems will include the accessibility and scalability point, but also bring more intelligence to the system by using machine learning to automate them, uh, having a full stack solution that takes full benefit of a system hardware, and finally consider lifelong cycle of learning so that we can build more applications that works in the long run. Thanks very much, and I hope you enjoy your virtual visit day.